last year. And we donated that project to uh, this, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, which is an organization who, uh, that owns a lot of the cloud native infrastructure, like uh, Kubernetes or Prometheus or Istio or a lot of the things that you may be using today in, in your, as part of your application infrastructure. And, uh, and we, don't, we are the main contributors to that project. We spend most of our time working there. So if you go to the uh, OpenFGA GitHub repository, you're going to see us working there. But we don't have any commercial offering on top of OpenFGA. You can use it, you can deploy it, you can operate it, right? And, uh, and, and you know, if you have an open source project, uh, what the most important thing for an open source project is to have stars in the repository. So if you go to openfga.dev now and you start the repository, I have like a four OpenFGA hats that I'm gonna give away for the four, first four people that do that, so hurry up. So in addition, of, uh, on top of, FG, of OpenFGA and also for uh, OctaFGA, we are building a lot of great tools to help developers use the product. Right? On the context of, of, of like a, a, a few things we're doing is we are doing an integration with Visual Studio Code that lets you manage and the language we have to define authorization models that Rag is going to explain later. Uh, that runs everywhere you can host Visual Studio Code, like in Visual Studio Code, or, or in github.dev, or in vscode.dev, everywhere. And uh, it has like things like uh, validation and, and, and syntax coloring. We have SDKs for a few languages. We're gonna keep building a few more. We're missing Ruby and Rust. And I think we're gonna stop there for a while. And then we also have a CLI that you can use to operate the system completely, right? And Drag is also gonna show us that. On the Okta FGA product, what we do is we take OpenFGA and we deploy it and operate it in a high scale way as we would expect of a company like Okta. Mm -hmm. So we deploy it in multiple regions. So and if one region goes down, the traffic gets routed automatically to the other one. We can route traffic by proximity. So if you are calling us from a, a server that is close to uh, a specific region, we are gonna route your traffic to that to minimize latency. We are targeting very low latency, so our P99, our target P99 is uh, below 50 milliseconds, and we're getting low, lower than that. And latency is important because you're gonna see, and when Rag explains the product a little more, that you're gonna call us very often from your applications, so you need very low latency. We are gonna offer this in a, in a multi-tenant environment like we call public cloud that we also have for, for our Okta CIC product. And we're also going to offer it in an isolated environment that we call private cloud, where you're going to be the only customer running in that set of, uh, in that environment. And we actually just finished a test where we could put a million RPS on the system, which is kind of a lot. And, uh, and we, are, we added 100 billion tuples, which are relationships, but there was the data that we have in the, in the system. Look, so this is kind of very large scale and we believed, and we can go higher, we just wanted to get there and, and, and got there, but we believe this product can scale very, very well. And, and then the other thing you're gonna get if you're using the hosted product is gonna, we're gonna make sure it is secure, the infrastructure is secure, the latest patches are available, that uh, it's compliant, that we're gonna have enterprise support, we're gonna be on call. So that's are the differences between the open source product and the cloud product. And the other thing you get in the cloud product is a, a dashboard where you can create the models and, and manage the, the permissions. And also it gives you a way to manage multiple FGA stores, which are like a, the units, the deployment units, and you can have one for development, for development, for staging, for production, or for multiple applications, and issue credentials for those. So now I'm gonna let Rag explain a little how the product works. And, uh, and hopefully you get a good sense of how it is. Thank you. Thanks, Andres. Um, hey, everyone. Uh, so you all heard Andres talk today, yesterday, and uh, in the dev keynote. And you're all super excited. Like, what's this FGA thing? We're excited. You're excited. How do we start? Um, there's multiple components before you can start integrating with FGA. In this session, we're going to focus on two, like the earliest two. Um, first one is modeling. How do you model your permission system, your logic, 
in FGA. The second one is how do you start integrating with the FGA APIs inside your service. So we're going to start with modeling. FGA, uh, Oct Oct FGA needs uh, at least two key data points to make a decision. One is the authorization model. The authorization model kind of represents uh, the types or lists the types of objects in your system or resources. And what do we mean by types of objects? That can mean anything. It, a user is a type, an organization, a document, a photo, a team. Uh, all of those are types of objects. The author authorization model kind of specifies these types and how they could potentially relate to one another. Uh, authorization models are fairly static, so uh, they're not supposed to change daily. They change whenever you're releasing a new feature, whenever you're uh, uh, we're changing an enhancement, but more or less, they're fairly static. That's brings, that brings us to our second uh, data point that we need, which is your authorization data. Uh, the authorization data kind of reflects or represents the facts of your system. We call them relationship tuples. They are the things you know to be true. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, Henry created document, you would send us uh, a tuple that says, Henry is the creator of this document. It's our job to then use the authorization model, use the data to uh, resolve your questions of what Henry can do. Um, the authorization data obviously is going to be constantly updated. As your users are uh, using the system, as they join organizations, leave organizations, start new projects, create documents, uh, like photos, all of that you will, you will be sending to us. Two key things. We only care about the data that affects authorization. Uh, what someone's name is, we don't care. Uh, what, uh, what the document's content is, we don't care. In fact, we really, we really would like it if you don't send us any personally identifiable data, send you your IDs. We don't care about anything else. Um, so we're going to start with actual modeling. Uh, what you see here is a very basic model. This is what we call the FGA DSL, or FGA modeling language. Um, you always start with model schema 1.1. That's the only supported schema right now. It might change in the future. So our use case we're going to start with is we ha you have users and organizations. So fairly simple use case. So first thing you need to do is extract the types so that you can write the model. Users and organizations, pretty simple. You have a type that's a user, a type that's an organization. Um, OK, so far so good, I hope. Um, now let's think about how they could relate to one another. Generally, uh, organizations have users as members. So we're just going to specify that. So under the organization type, we're going to say you have relations. You have, uh, we're defining a member relation, and then we're going to say, what does that mean? We're going to say, you can see two square brackets and a user in between them. Whenever you see these two square brackets, it means this uh, relation is assignable. That means you can write us a fact that says, a, uh, that says something is a member of an organization. And what the user there is doing is saying that that something must be of a user type. You cannot say an organization as a member of another organization, it has to be a user. So, okay, that we're starting with modeling. Uh, now we ha we have a variety of tools to help you model. Uh, Andres showed the dashboard. We're gonna uh, show that uh, soon. We also have the OpenFGA VS Code extension and the OpenFGA CLI, which we're gonna use to continue with this modeling session. So let's switch. Here. Uh, is the lovely model you saw earlier. This is the VEGAS code extension. .fga is what the extension and the CLI uh, read and uh, interpret to be an open FGA model. Uh, just to show you, you can see the syntax highlighting. Uh, you can see validation. It helps you like if you're doing any typos or anything that's not allowed in the FGA world, uh, the VS code extension will help you uh, notice and fix that. What you see on the right is uh, a YAML file. It kind of represents your store. A store is the representation of your model and the data. In this case, you can see 
the model at the top that we're, we're linking to this model. Uh, you can see the tuples. Tuples, again, your relationships, the facts of your system. Here we're specifying that Anne is a member of the Okta organization. So user Anne is a member of Okta organization. Notice, okay, there's user, relation, member. Every tuple is in this format. You have to send these three points. When we say user, that does not mean a physical person. It doesn't have to be Anne. A user is any entity. It can, a folder can be a parent of a document. The user is a folder. So don't be, uh, uh, don't be mixed up with the name user. It's just think of it as the subject, the principle. That's what the user is. So here we're saying user uh, Anne is member of Okta organization. Here we have a set of tests. We use that, like think of these as your unit tests for the model to gain confidence that you're doing something and it's, the model is functioning as you expect because this is kind of authorization, kind of important, you don't want to make mistakes. So here what we're doing is we're saying, okay, when we finally do run a check, we expect Anne to be a member of the organization and for FGA to return true. If Beth, Beth, according to the facts we have or the tuples we have, Beth is not a member of the organization and we expect this to return false. So uh, let's use uh, the, the FGA CLI to see so far, is this functioning according to our expectations or not? So uh, the FGA CLI does a bunch of stuff. We're gonna focus on the testing part here, but it can do reads, writes, uh, all sorts of things. So we're gonna test it and it's gonna tell us, okay, the two tests we have are passing as we expect. If let's say we said we expect this to be false, the CLI will complain and say, okay, no, one of the tests you wrote is actually not passing, you expected false, we got true. So in general, in a lot of B2B SaaS, you don't just have a member relation on the under organizations. You have a set of roles maybe, you have a set of permissions. Let's expand them and say you have just two roles, admins, uh, and you have two permissions. Someone can invite members and someone can view the org. Uh, you'll notice a few new things here. First of all, the, the can view and can invite members no longer have these brackets. That means they're not assignable. You cannot say, and can view directly. We'll tell you like this is invalid. It can only be inferred. And this is what you see next. You can see this has another, now is referencing another relation. So now if member is true, can view, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> can view is true. Same for can invite members. You'll see another thing here, which is the or. If either the user is assigned or the admin relation is true, this becomes true. Uh, our test is fairly simple. Anne is an admin of Okta. Beth is a member of Okta. What we're going to test is Anne, as an admin, should be able to invite and view the org. So invite users and view the org. Beth, being just a member, should be able to view the org but not invite users. Charles some other person should be able to do neither, not related to the org. So let's run the test. And it's passing, as all the checks are passing as we expect. Now, you can add a lot more, represent a lot more uh, groupings. So let's say you have groups, teams, whatever. Uh, you'll notice this new syntax. Now, it's not only users who can be assigned as admins. We have this thing that's called group member. Notice it's not group. So you cannot have a group be an admin. That makes no sense. It's group members. Members of a group can be admins of an org. And here, this helps because when you say group members can be members of a group, that's where you have infinite nesting. So you can do the same for orgs. You want to nest orgs, an acquisition, Fairly simple to model. And let's go through this quickly. Anne is a member of the IT admin group. Uh, the, IT, uh, the, IT, uh, sorry, the IT admin group members are members of the admin group. And the members of the admin group 
are admins on the Okta organization. Beth is still a member. All the checks we ran in the previously should still work. Even though we're not specifying Anne as a member, FGA understands and evaluates because of, all, because of our model, this means that Anne is actually a member and we run the checks and they should still all turn true. All are passing. Okay, so we are done with representing our users and how they're grouped together. Uh, we're gonna start going into resources. So I mentioned, again, resources can be anything, documents, photos, likes, replies, threads, all that. What we're saying here is we have a document resource and it has a creator. So each document has a creator. Um, the documents are created within the context of an organization. So uh, just that. And then we're saying, okay, who can edit the document? The creator or the admin from the organization. And this is a new syntax you're gonna see is the from. The from allows you to reference a different thing. So now you're looking at, okay, what's the organization? And get me all the admins from it. So any admin from the organization can now edit. Any member of the organization can now view. And because admins are members, then admins can also view. Over the test here, Anne is an admin, Beth is a member. Uh, notice that we wrote two tuples here. So Anne created a document, the budget document. We had two facts. One, then Anne is the creator. Two, that in, in, it's in the context of the Okta org. So that's fine. Sometimes an action can result in multiple tuples. That's not a bad thing. So Anne created the budget document. Beth created the roadmap document. Now Anne, being uh, the admin, should be able to edit and view all the documents. Beth should be able only to uh, edit the document that they created, but not be able to edit the document that Anne created, because Beth is only a member. Um, Charles, not related to the org at all, should not be able to see or view or edit anything. So let's check it out. Again, everything's still passing. This is not the case when you're modeling. Sometimes things will fail and you'll have to fix them, but yeah. Um, we're not gonna go deeply into this. It's still the same logic. You have, we just added a folder. Now you have folders. Folders can be nested inside folders. 50, 60 levels. You have documents inside folders. An editor of the top folder can read the document all the way down. Um, it uses the exact same logic we've been using previously. Um, we're also allowing, uh, allowing like folders and, ed uh, and documents to be shared individually outside the organization. So you can share it with someone else. And here what we're saying, uh, I'm not gonna go into this. Trust me, it's gonna pass. Uh, and this basically, Kind of complex use case if you're gonna uh, do it in a proper author uh, authorization with like whatever RBAC uh, works fairly easily here. And okay, so we're telling you, okay, uh, this is magic, this new uh, FGA thing, it's based on uh, reback, which is relationships. Um, it works for all these use cases. <sighs> Unfortunately, for some use cases, uh, that our customers and our users had, uh, it doesn't work well. For example, when you want to do uh, authorization and say that Anna is only able to edit documents starting with an S, or uh, Johnny is able to um, view documents that are tagged marketing and published. So for those cases, they're possible to do in, in Reback and in FGA, it just, becomes a bit complex to think about and a bit harder. So we're working on this thing, which is bringing a bit of ABAC, not all of ABAC, into uh, FGA, which we call it conditions. So now you're able to say, uh, okay, I'm granting this user access 
with, for this specific time period. Or basically, they have, like, in order for this tuple that I'm writing, this fact I'm writing, it's true but within a certain condition. Here you can say, okay, we're saying who can be viewers? It's users that pass this condition. And what is this condition? We're saying this condition is a non expired grant and a valid IP address. And it takes a bunch of input, like the current timestamp, what the timestamp that the grant was given, the grant duration, the current IP address, and what the allowed IP address range is. And you write the code basically to verify that. And in the tuples, uh, what we say is, OK, Anne is a viewer of the document with the condition of, and then we provide context to that condition. What we're saying is, this was granted on this date. The grand duration is 10 seconds. And this is the IP address range in which this will be true. And uh, later, when we're calling the check, again, in context, what we pass in is the current timestamp of the check and the user's current IP address. Basically, FGA will take these along with this context and try to evaluate this condition and only allow it if it evaluates it true. Uh, and again, here we see the viewer will return true. Uh, but if this is beyond 10 seconds, this will return false. This is outside the allowed IP address range. It will return false. Here we have checks for list object. We won't get to them right now, but we also allow getting all the objects of a certain type that the user has access to. And basically, let's just run it. And yeah, everything's still working as we expected. Uh, OK, so now we've modeled. What do we do now? So here's another case where the CLI would help, is once you add your credentials and configure uh, your, uh, your API, you can just do write it, and boom, it's deployed. You're done. Um, the CLI and the VS Code extension are also available on the web. So not the CLI, sorry, just the VS Code extension. So if you're on GitHub, your models are there. You can easily get into an editor. You, your first time you need to install the OpenFGA extension, you get all the goodies, syntax highlighting, validation. That all still works. The CLI allows you to do uh, ICD deployments. So here you can see, uh, like, on this PR, it only passes if the, the, the model and the tests work. Otherwise, like, reject it. And this is, helps you do, you want to update your model, it has to go through a CI-CD uh, phase. For those of you who prefer a less developer CI-CD-centric uh, way, we have the FGA dashboard, which Andres pointed uh, or alluded to earlier, which allows you to do the exact same thing we've been doing. It has the same syntax highlighting, uh, same validation, you can add tuples, you can run queries, you can see pretty graphs. Um, and importantly, this is where you get issue credentials to be able to talk, uh, to configure the CLI to de for deployment or the SDKs or your app. So this is uh, the FGA dashboard. And this is where we move on from the, uh, uh, from the modeling section to uh, integration. So now we're modeled, we need to integrate with our APIs. No, normally how we do that is, okay, let's say you have an API that returns documents, you, do, uh, you have the route, authentication, and you throw an error on authentic if the authenticate fail, and then you return it. All you need to do is add the part where you're creating the FGA client, and then before getting a document, uh, just calling check. Write and check are two of the most important endpoints that FGA offers. Check is to check if someone has access. Write is to tell us and update us with the facts. So get a document, check first that, we, that they can access it, and then uh, only allow, return it if allowed. Same for write. In this case, they're writing a document so inside an org. So check that they can. Like as we saw earlier, Charles should not be able to create a document in an org he does not belong to. So check that they can. 
then create the document in your local database, then update us with the tuples to state the fact that this thing has just happened. Sharing, extremely easy. So you want to share documents, check the user can share it, yes? All right, it's shared. Write the tuple indicating it's shared, and that's it. Um, you can either make it with a middleware, so now things, you can take the logic a bit up higher, so now it's get, authenticate, authorize, and continue on with your life. Um, again, for updating, for deleting. Um, we're not going to demo. Uh, Andres talked earlier about uh, our timeline. We uh, had an early developer community preview. We had a private beta in March uh, 22. We open sourced it in, uh, we open sourced OpenFGA in June 2022, mainly because this is something we want to collaborate. We want it to be more out in the open. Uh, so we'd love your contributions. You know, mistakes in our docs or SDKs are not working as you expect. You want more features? Feel free. More, don't just star us. Feel free to contribute or talk to us and we'll work through it. We released the uh, limited early access uh, earlier this year. And as Andres said, general availability next year. You can already sign up. So the developer community pre preview is still running. You can sign up for free on the dashboard, use it just with a bit lower late rate limits. Resources, OpenFGA, check out the website. Uh, OctaFGA, again, check out the website. They link to a bunch of resources. Uh, quickly, documentation of uh, FGA, the dashboard, and uh, the developer lab, if you want to just have a, it basically talks about what we talked about earlier, about how to model. And there's a getting started guide in the documentation that's also really helpful. Please connect with us. Um, Okta FGA, we have a vibrant community on the Azure Labs uh, Discord community. Join us. Uh, do ask questions. Nothing's uh, not allowed. Well, some things are not allowed. <laughs> Be respectful, please. But uh, do talk to us about FGA. Um, Open FGA also has a vibrant community. Join us on GitHub. Follow us on Twitter. And thank you, thank you so much. I hope this was um, informative at least, hopefully interesting. Um, if you want to ask us questions, Andres and I will be outside. Um, we look forward. Uh, and thank you. Hope you enjoy Octane. <laughs> thank you.